time now for my daily interview series, Money Talks. We've, we've heard that sales of furniture and household appliances from Paul have helped drive retail sales upwards. And today I'm talking to Scott Woodhead. He's CEO and founder of YOLO, a thriving online retail village which sells a vast range of products. YOLO started on the kitchen table in North Yorkshire back in 2014. It now owns and operates multiple brands that sell across almost 50 countries. And YOLO has a multi-million pound investment deal with garden furniture company Amazonas. And here he is, Scott Woodhead, my latest guest on Money Talks. Scott, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us how the company started. What were you doing before? Yep. And what gave you the mad idea of starting your own business? I think I've always been interested in business, so it was just something I've always wanted to do. Um, I used to work for a big company that sold GPS, and I remember the first time I went, I was really inspired by their offices and yeah. just the thought that like, one person has created this business out yeah. of nothing. And so, Despite being told they couldn't. Exactly. That's often, the, be certain couldn't, often yeah. happens when you start a business, right? Other yeah. people say, you can't do that. Yeah. If it would work, it had already been done. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, so what's different about you that made you think, actually, I can do this? Well, I mean, for me, the, the big motivation for starting it was to create a company where people enjoyed coming to work. Because yeah. a lot of businesses these days, it's like going to school, isn't it? It's like you have to be there at a certain time. You have to wear a uniform, mm. take your lunch at a certain time. So we really wanted to create something where we get the best out of people. And by getting the best out of people, that then translates into us doing great things with our brands and what we do. So tell us about the business before the pandemic and how the pandemic impacted you. Yeah, so, I mean, before the pandemic, we were growing quite nicely. Just um, like five or six years from 2014 to correct, 2020. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then when the pandemic hit, it actually accelerated the business. We saw right. a massive increase in sales. So with everybody going home and kind of working from home and being in the gardens a lot more during that first lockdown, um, our hammock business took off. So we, we sold loads of hammocks through that. And then the other businesses that we have in there, kind of more consumer brands, mm. were really successful. So it all kind of played, played nicely out for us, to be honest. And then I guess as we went into that second one, we still had some of that momentum. So you specialise in retailing garden furniture, right, and other items for the yeah. garden. To what extent has your retail offer expanded beyond that original vision? Yeah, so garden is one of the areas we do. We've got a tea business. We've, got a, we've just acquired a business called Cosmetolab, which is like a it manufacturer's um, beauty products. Right. Uh, we've got a packing machinery business. Um, we've just acquired a stake in one of our suppliers, Amazonas. That was the multi-million pound deal yeah. you refer to. Yeah. So we've we've kind of got lots of different things in lots of different markets. Gives us a nice spread and de-risks it a little bit because if one market goes down, we've got other ones to rely on. Here's a question: You're obviously yeah. a very successful young guy. You're employing lots of people. You're doing great things, and I tip my hat to you. Thank you. But to what extent would you say? we should at least discuss whether or not big online retailers, and you're now a medium-sized online yeah. retailer, you know, pushing to become a big online retailer. Yeah. To what extent do you think, Scott, that some of them are just a little bit too powerful now? Yeah. And they're crushing physical retailers. Yeah, I think the, the bigger guys will probably end up having more of a hybrid system where they put more into the high street because I think there's always a place for the high street. I assume that's what you refer to. Yeah, so you to. see the big online retailers with high street outlets. Yeah. I mean, if, so where's the room for you know, families, local people to build their own shops and yeah, stores yeah. if the retail giants are, are massive, not just online, yeah. but in high streets too? I guess there's, there's opportunities out there everywhere. You just have to look. Mm. And if you're offering a good service... Mm in a market where there's enough demand for it and you do it in, a, in the right way with a motivated team, then I think you've got a good chance of succeeding. Not a, a guaranteed chance, but a good chance. I think some of the big retailers, the reason they've got big is because what they're offering is what people want, right? Mm. And what would you say to Scott Woodhead back in 2014 that you now know that you didn't then that you wish you did? <laughs> <laughs> It takes longer. Everything takes longer. <laughs> um, I think that would be the... Because when I first started, I had aspirations that we were going to be here, you know, within six months and everything just takes a bit longer. So I think patience would be one. Just be patient. Yeah. One step in front of the other. Be consistent with what you're doing. And, and you know, and if, you're, and if, you're on, if you're doing the right things, you might have some success. In and what's life. a typical day for somebody like you who started and runs their own yeah. successful business? Is there a typical day? Not really, no. I mean... You do everything, 
really. So you have your, your finance hat on, you have a marketing hat on. Um, we're not quite at that stage where I can step back and lots of other people on it. I'm still heavily involved yeah. in it. And I, and I like that, you know, I like, I like spinning the plates. But yeah, there's, there's not a typical day, to be honest. If I told you what I've been doing this week, you'd probably think, why are you doing all of that? <laughs> well, fixing the photocopier and the coffee machine and yeah. hanging the curtains in the office and like while that. thinking about strategy and, yeah. and, and raising money. I mean, just, just finally, Scott... What's your one piece of advice to people watching on The Money today? Many people who watch us either run their own businesses or think they might want to run their own business. What's the one thing yeah. from Scott Woodhead that you would say to people aspiring to yeah. be entrepreneurs? Good question. I think get started. That's, you've got to start. You've got to, a lot of people will be possibly thinking about starting a business yeah. and they've been thinking about it way too long and, you know, Hard work beats talent. I think if you just put that first step in, whatever that is, make that call, do some research, get something moving. I think that's... It, when you start something, it creates momentum. As they say, ready, fire, aim. Exactly, yeah. yeah great Scott book. Woodhead of YOLO. Great to have you here. Yeah, thank you. On The Money, as our latest Money Talks guest, stay in touch with us. We'll be really pleased to hear how your business goes in the months and years to come. Thank you for having All us. All the best. Scott Cheers. Woodhead there of YOLO, my latest Money Talks guest. 